Kumei Foundation is a non-governmental organization under the visionary leader of architect Tayo Erele, the executive director of Tabita Kumei Foundation. Tabita Kome, which literally means Woman Arise, focuses on raising the quality and standard of living of underprivileged women and girls. The vision of the foundation is to enhance the dignity of women and girls by giving them value for living and empowering them to function effectively in the society. While the foundation is already embarking on the mission, to give women and girls a new lease of life by raising their standard of living from adverse circumstances through education, adult literacy, health awareness and service delivery. Other services rendered by the foundation include vocational and financial training, empowerment, mentorship and psychosocial support. On Saturday, 15 February 2020, Tabita Kumi Foundation accomplished a first awaited mission as two among the former indigent girls who have been nurtured and mentored by the foundation were among the graduates awarded first degrees at the 24th Convocation Ceremony of the University of Abuja, Nigeria. The journey to the attainment of academic excellence was rough and tough according to the beneficiaries. But with God and Tabita Kumi Foundation, the journey was ended a success story. Here directly from the beneficiary at the just concluded meeting on girls' education in underdeserved communities in Abuja, which was scheduled to mark International Women Day for 2020. And um, Fatima, um, I'm going to ask you a question. Please, can you share your story? how um, TCF has um, improved you economically. TCF has helped me a lot in my life. When TCF came to my community, then I was in second place. I never thought of going back to school. Because in my community, in Biden land, when somebody finished um, secondary school, or when you stop, when you drop out from school, the next thing is for you to stay at some point and get married. So when the Tabitha Kumi Foundation came into my community and I joined it. So when I was in secondary school, I never thought of going back to school. But when we the things they have been teaching us with the encouragement, they teach us so many things that a girl should not just stay at home like that. When you drop out from school, don't think that that is the end of your life. You still have where to go. So they taught us things like life skills. They teach us skills acquisition. That is what we can use. Don't that I should not stay and depend on anybody. If I depend on somebody, definitely I'm not get to where I am going. So with the help of some situations in my life, when I do secondary school, I don't have money to go to school in place. Three years now. So I decided to involve myself in some business, like I'm into fashion design right now. So, and she called us again to improve our level of business. She has done a lot in my life, and now very soon she has, the Tabitha Kumi Foundation has registered me to write my job and take it. I was just a little girl in the village, no hope for school. I was just there enjoying my village life till I came in contact with TCS at that time. Then, before then, the only language I could speak was C. So when I came, I didn't even, there was no way we could communicate because I did not understand any other language. So I, I started doing home 
Lessie. And, my, and I was being taught I and in and all those things. Then I then I started school. And not long after, this village girl started coming first position. I I started in basic one. I started in basic one. I finished and today I've gained admission into the university. This year was TCF gave me life. It, it gave me an opportunity to go to school. I didn't know I was, I didn't know I had intelligence till I started school. So, as I me, mean, I did not come in contact with TCF. I would have still been there. I would have wasted my life. But I thank God for Tabitha Kumi Foundation. I came into my life. I was doing nothing because I got married very early. I passed a lot of things, but with the help of Angel and Tabitha, I am able to start from somewhere. They taught me how to start to save, how to learn a business, how to start a business, where I will start from. I went and started learning how to sew, but I see that it's very difficult. I said I can't learn it, and I come back and see that too. But when Andy came into my life, they said a girl can do anything and anything that you want to do, put your mind that you must, you can do it. So I went back there and I learned how to sew. With the help of Tabitha and Andy, they gave me a sewing machine where I started sewing some small, small bags in my community. That is where I start getting something. My, my husband stopped in secondary school. But with the help of Angel, I was able to tell him the importance of education. So I now told him about this Angel, and he supports me very well. With the help of this Angel, when I give birth to a girl, I was hopeless. Because I'm a girl. My senior brothers, they went to university and they graduated. But my, I grew up with my auntie and uncle. So they were not saying that I'm a girl. A girl's schools always end on the pot. So I got married very early. So when I give birth to my first baby, I was hopeless. The second one, I was hopeless. But, but with the help of Angel, I know that girls are very important. With the help of Angel, I know the importance of education. And I am very happy because of NG, I'm now in school. I'm very happy that I'm in school. With the help of Tabitha and NG, I was invited for an IOLA training, which, ha which has helped me to improve in my, uh, in my business very well. They taught me how to package, how to record keeping, how to finish my sewing because I'm a tailor and I'm proud that I'm a tailor. Yes. I have also been going for exhibitions. With the help of Engine and Tabitha, they have changed my life because if not for Engine and Tabitha, I don't know where I would have been today. And I am proud to have those girls and I'm going to train them very well. Wow. Tabitha, 
they have taught us international business. And we have been going for exhibition and we are doing very well. We have also opened a creative hub, which we have been coming, some people are ordering for souvenirs and we are sewing and, and, and we are very happy about it. With the help of Engine and Tabita, we were supposed to go to America for our, for our product, for our exhibition, but they denied us. But we, are, we still thank God for everything. So, Engine and Tabita has changed my life very well, and I'm grateful, and may God bless them. Yes. Um, the, a member of the girls, of the girls' club, Tabita, um, Tabita Tabita, um, I'm very happy to be part of the club. They have really, really impacted in me. I, 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 before I couldn't even speak in the public. I was a very shy person. I say, I always say at the back because I'm shy. And um, I want to talk about the skill I really learned. You know, it really, really um, helped me in school. Like, seriously, you know, sometimes you have to deal with hunger in school. So I just sat down in the hotel. I thought of something that you know I could do. Then we were in hotel level. I think when we went for the girls' initiative. Um, um, that same thing, she took um, skills or something I've forgotten. So we went there, they taught us um, a lot of skills. They taught us how to do um, liquid soap, Isad, air freshener, home care products. So we went there, we were able to complete the course. So when I came back to school, I saw that, okay, I saw an opportunity, so I tried to grab it. In hostel there, sometimes girls really feel lazy to, you know, to go to. Um, downstairs because we are, we are downstairs and feel busy to come down to get something. So I thought that wow, this is an opportunity for me to, you know, to um, use my skills and try to get what I want. So I, I said, um, okay, I will sell pure water because that is the normal thing we do use all this um, water, pen, boots, kerosene, we use it for our food. And um, I started selling and I'm happy that it went well. It was able to, you know, pay some of my fees and uh, feed it, even though you get little from it, at least you know that, okay, you can serve it to you know, some, some extent. Um, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, I want to use this medium to thank uh, Mami Tabita. Well, now she, she, she has really been uh, uh, she's, uh, she's, like, uh, she's a mentor to me. To me. She's uh, somebody that, you know, I look up to, like, I want to be like her, I want to speak like her. <laughs> And I want also to employ the government agencies that are here to please support this um, this um, NGO because they are the only NGO. I'm just saying because that's what I you know I've come to realize they are the only NGO that have really you know go um, to communities and you know, touch people's lives. You, they don't you know there are some NGO that they'll say okay they'll give them money they'll you know eat it or something like that. We all know about it. but this one they go here and they make sure that. They cover everything. If they are to, you know, teach the girls, we are not even paying a, a, a dime. Even if it's pen that we are going to use to write again for our own, they provide everything. So I want, I want to, you know, employ all the government agencies to please support this NGO because they are really, really doing what they are supposed to do. And um, I pray that the Almighty Allah continue to strengthen them and um, keep um, <laughs> making us successful. Thank you, thank you, Tabi, to Kumi Foundation. Thank you, everyone, for this uh, great organization. And we hope that, inshallah, more of the guests are going to be a graduate. We are going to be you know, an important people in, the community, in our community and in the society at large. Thank you very much. Because we, um, with the coming of um, Tabi Kumi Foundation in our communities, rate of a uh, teenage pregnancy was reduced. Um, women went back to school, adult education, and again, um, they also taught us how to save, open an account for us where we can save money and all that. And also, uh, they were able to talk to our parents to allow us go to school. We should not finish primary school and then get married. It's not the right thing for us. Like we should, we should further our education and make our future bright. And also, it's also empower, it also inspire, inspire us because the um, big professionals who talk to us, who you can look up to. Like I can remember, there's this um, young lady that came to talk to us and she 
was a cop again, and I was like, God, I want to be like this lady, this khaki, I want to wear it. And then, after everything, I was determined and focused. And thank God now, I'm a graduate. I want to say a very big thank you. On behalf of the Department of Mass Education, FCT, I would like to appreciate each and every one of you here. And uh, in fact, Sabita Kumi have made my day yeah. with all the testimonies I have witnessed <laughs> this afternoon. It is very touching and heartwarming to see these young girls, the future leaders of tomorrow, to realize their dreams in life. It is only an opportunity given to us by God for me and you to be educated. It is not their own making. For them not to be educated, maybe at the right time or when they were supposed to be educated. I used to be examples to girls. As a woman, and a woman from the north, where we have education inequalities between the boy child and the girl child, for me to stand before you this afternoon, and for me to witness the, the successes you have recorded in your life through the help of Tabitha Kumi Foundation. May Almighty God continue to increase Tabitha Kumi Foundation. May Almighty God continue to strengthen this foundation to do more in educating our girls. When Fatima was narrating her stories, it was so touching. But at the end of the day, we all feel fulfilled. Is it to Sena and Asana who are graduates of the University of Abuja today? Is it the young lady from Jikoi community? Is it the one from Benue State who has gotten enrollment in one of our universities today? The, 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 the sky is your stepping stone. By the grace of God, you become a professor. <laughs> Tabitha Kumi, on behalf of the Department of Mass Education, will continue to support Tabitha Kumi. Yeah. I stand by Tabitha Kumi. In whichever way we can come in, because it is the mandate of the Department of Mass Education to give second chance education not only to girls, but to women, to boys, and to women and girls. So we stand solidly behind you, and we are going to support you in whichever way we will do. Sake. The Jikoi community girl and the Benue, please, whichever way you want me to assist you, I'm rev ever ready. <laughs> For Usena Asana, who are graduates today, please, you can forward your CV to my office. May Almighty God continue to strengthen each and every one of us. May, you see, it's good for you to do a good turn every day. For the fact that we are educated today, it's not a right, but it is a God-given privilege. So let us encourage others. Let us inspire others to achieve their aims in life. Thank you very much. Amen from Plan International Nigeria. Just to put my few comments in context, um, we do similar job, I would say, what Tabitha Kumi is doing.
but I must admit that um, I feel ashamed. I feel ashamed that uh, we are in Abuja. We have our country office in Abuja, but uh, we do not have program presses in Abuja. So where, what Asana or Usena was saying about Tabitha, knowing Tabitha to be the only NGO around that goes to the nooks and corners of the FCT is not far from the truth. So I really congratulate you for what you are doing. And because of uh, uh, the nature of what we do, I have little idea of what it takes to do what you have done so far. It is not easy. Uh, for me, it's a great fit. When we do success stories or case studies, success stories like what they have delivered today, this is just a sample. This is just a sample out of many because you cannot bring everyone on, on, on board to come and start narrating their story. My wish for you is that you grow from stretch to stretch so that more girls and evil boys will benefit. I'm saying boys, I'm saying boys because um, there's something one of them said. He said, okay, Fatima, she said the brothers went to school up to university level, but for her, because she's a girl, she was refused going to school as she was married off early. You know why? Because the parents, principally maybe the father, did not recognize why or the significance of a, um, a girl going to school. If he knew. So if we manage to train, if we manage to train or we're empowering girls, 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 and we leave the boys, we still have a cycle of men who believe they are, they are, they are, it's only them. The world belongs to them. And they will have girls and they refuse to send them to school. And Kumi and the rest of us will keep coming looking for such girls. So even if you had given 10 million Naira to Fatima, for example, you just dash her and say, oh, because of your condition. I strongly believe it would not have made the difference it has made to her. And, and do you follow what I'm saying? Because you have made her to realize what she's capable of doing. What do you say of the young lady from Benue? As she was speaking, she was speaking her words. I've not seen a better English speaker. For those of us, for those of us who understand the English language, you understand the tenses. She was speaking them, and I'm so, I don't know, it's not, I'm not, I feel so emotional about it. She said that she was in the village, she, until, until her eyes became open to what education could do, she thought she didn't know anything. She couldn't know anything. This young lady is a professor in the making. So, I do not want to, I do not want to bore you. I'm happy, and I'm sure we are all happy, and uh, keep doing the good work you are doing. I'm going to take this message back to the office, and for me, I cannot wait for us to join hands with you to see as much as we can do in the FCT and beyond. Thank you very much. In fact, uh, let me start with Fatima. When Fatima came in on stage, and she dropped tears, the moment she started with her success story, I was crying. Why was I crying? If Fatima, other girls can get such awareness, advocacy that Fatima have gotten, I think we would have gone a long way. Well, I adopt my heart for Tabitha Kumi. You are doing very well, and I'm so proud of you people, and uh, you people will continue to do that. Uh, just like we are saying, We'll take this back to the office. We'll make the minister, because my minister, Ambassador Mariam Katabu, is so passionate about girls child. And on that note, we'll take this message back to her, because we've seen the success story in life. It's not as if we were told. Uh, for the thief girl, I'm so proud of you. Yeah, just like my brother said, you were picking your words. We never knew somebody that only understands thief 
could come up to where you are and taking even that first position. I'm so proud of you. Hassana and Husena, I wish you people well. Um, by the special grace of God, just like uh, my other colleague from FCT have uh, said, do well, finish your service, and then give your CV. I'm so proud of you, girls. I'm so proud of you. Um, all I need to say, uh, I'll still plead with you, the Tabita Kume Foundation, to keep doing more. Because by doing this, a lot of girls will come out from where they are. I was going to ask, there's a lady in my office now. She came in with a, a diploma result from a, a private polytechnic. She said uh, she's okay with that. I told her, no, you can't stop there. Even if you don't have anybody to sponsor, you will look for a way that you get sponsored. She said, ah, the auntie she's staying with, that she's staying with an Igbo lady, it's not her relation. That the woman said the diploma she has gotten from a private polytechnic is okay. But she doesn't even have the result in the hand right now. I said, no, that's not okay for you. You need to go further. I pushed, I pushed. She didn't want to go. Eventually, she got admission now. We are looking for how she can be sponsored. So I was going to use this opportunity to say, how will this girl, because I don't want her to waste away, keen into uh, Tabitha Kume Foundation so that she can get little support, little encouragement. Please, I really appreciate all that you are doing. Keep doing the good work, and God will bless you richly. Tima is just one of the 1,803 girls in FCT that Tabitha Kumi is supporting. Let's appreciate them. <laughs> you know the beautiful thing about this work we do? We are not reaching the girls, we are not just reaching all girls, we are reaching marginalized girls. We are reaching those that are usually unreachable and we are helping them to thrive. Because without education, a girl can't go far. Even if you have money, you can't write your name in the bank. You'll be swindled. Even if you have money, I can't speak in public. So things money cannot buy. So the work we are doing, we are supporting the girls to develop skills that are important for living. This uh, Tabitha Kumi from the very first day I walked into your office in my time up to now. Uh, so Tabitha Kumi is one of our partners in Mexico that we're implementing NG with. I've never been disappointed. So I want to thank you. the work before going the extra mile. A lot of people do what you have paid them to do. Some people don't even deliver on what you have paid them to do. But I did have come in, we do what you have asked them to do and had child. So for that, I'm very good. I'm always happy. Just like my colleague from Plan, was it the person from Plan? Somebody said she was she wanted to cry. The mother from I was very when Fatima was speaking. I was almost you cried. Okay, I tried not to because well I've had to cry several times when I go to the field because these stories that we hear are transforming. There is no amount of salary we are paid that can compensate for the joy you feel when you go to the field. Girls, thank you. Thank you for your success story. If you're not successful, we'll not be gathered here because there will be an essence to this meeting. You have provided the content for this meeting. So thank you for your success. I want to thank you. This is the least you can be. You can go further. You can go further. In the world, while I was sitting there during the meeting, there is a meeting next week. Mr. Women Affairs was asked, can you give us a girl that can speak? And it wasn't difficult for me to think because the girls in this room are phenomenal. Thank you and keep trying. The right avenue, the right resources. And thank you to the foundation for providing this. Well done, girls. And as you have been told, this is just the starting point, right? If I were you, I'll follow that madame in white. Like, as she's leaving, I'm following her. Now, the most, the, the part that touched me most is Fatima. The trend has been that when we get pregnant, we have to stop school, and that's the end. And she didn't even have the opportunity to go to school at all. But then, she had an avenue, and she utilized it, and she's back in school. Thank you, Tabitha Kumi Foundation. Well, right now, madam, you are distracted. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so right now, actually, you know about our project, right? The Women's Voice and Leadership Project. Yeah, that's how we met. And I, as I just saw everything going on here, I'm like, how did we miss this? Then I realized we are working with networks in FCT. We have project states that we deal, we focus on organizations, but in the city we are working with networks. I'm telling you that if any opportunity comes 
wants to expand, scale up, and organizations have to be involved in the FCT. I'm definitely taking this back, and I'll contact you. That's for sure. All right, so I wish you guys the best. Continue to impact your communities, and do well for yourselves too. Thank you. Uh, yes, because I want to go to the podium first. Uh, my grandchildren, well done. Can I see who is the computer to first? I am from Kaduna and I want to see the, this computer that invites Noah and Noah invites me. I want to see her face to face. You are the one. May the Almighty bless you. May she, may the Almighty give you all the prospects and the progress and uh, what can I say again? No formal. And let me just back up. Um, sincerely speaking, I'm short of words. Madam, do you base, you said faith-based organization. Do you live it here in Abuja or you are thinking of people in the Sahara where we have the problem of the young child? That is a question to you. And uh, in the Nogat side of it, no one that Almighty says, if I want things to be done, I will do it. He didn't come from up and do it. So that is why my every president said I should come and represent him. So that I will come and see and hear. I have been hearing about you, madam, who do as well. And all the assistance that you are rendering to our organization, we the all want to bless you. Uh, in this aspect, I said, as I'm short of words, please extend this issue down to the north. The Honorable Commissioner of Kaduna State will welcome you. And His Excellency, that is why he removes confusion in all girl education in Kaduna State. And I am inviting you especially to my school, which is Mwemina Kwanzun. I have not less than 6,000 uh, uh, students in that school, both senior and junior. You are welcome. <laughs> why do I say this? Is because this is what we want. This true testimony that you have done, sincerely speaking, I'm taking it down there. And uh, Mama Nogas, I am very, very happy for this golden opportunity that the Almighty gave me to come down here and see things by myself and then carry it out. I am very grateful. Madam, Amen. Yes. Um, generally, if you look at the ministry, our core mandate is to to sit on the development and promote uh, trade. Since I'm not coming from education or marginalized perspective, I look at it that um, my minister is so passionate about girls' child. Um, with that, uh, with what we have seen today, and just like they rightly said, the, one of the board of trustees said that some of the girls have met with my minister. I am quite sure my minister is going to do a lot to see how this problem can, how a girl, child can have equal rights like their men and impart on them. Sincerely speaking, the achievements are phenomenal. You know, because um, um, I've been with her for, since she started and um, I've seen the programs, attended most of them and the consistency is amazing and the response has been great. Um, a lot of lives has been touched. One that has really touched me is the transformation of a whole community and that's Durumi. I remember the first time we went to Durumi was like, where is she taking us? And um, what has happened there, if you go and see, has been life changing. So there's so much they have done and achieved. We have policies in place for both the in-school girls and the out-of-school girls. We have the national policy in education. We have the national gender policy in basic education. We have the Child Rights Act. 
and some other policies too, and we are implementing in FCT. Okay, I want to also ask you, how do you think, from, especially coming from where you are coming from an education background, yes. how do you think you can, what, what can you contribute, especially towards marginalized years, or what have you been contributing? Let me see that one. Hmm. Uh, in the FCT, we have been working with partners to ensure that the marginalized girls are given a place in school. So we also do a, generate a lot of activities in schools that promote their rights. Now, many of our girls in school know their rights. They know how to identify uh, abuse and know how to protect themselves from abuse. We, in fact, we just concluded our school, our school pro, uh, programs uh, a few days ago for this term. So next term we will continue. We do, we do such programs every term to give a, a sensitization to the children because we believe that children are in the best position to protect themselves from abuse. Apart from ensuring the fact that they should be in school, we also want to make sure that they are safe. And we are doing this in collaboration with partners. I have been attending programs to an extent that about 20 something years back, we went for a workshop called uh, Human Rights in an Islamic Forum of which uh, professors of law in Nigeria have made it. But to be candid and sincere with you, with the testimonies that I see now, it's more than that one. That's part that uh, uh, the issue of education for a girl child, but this one is real testimony. I have seen it practically. And these are the young girls that uh, more grace to the founder of that very particular organization called Tabita Foundation. Uh, I am, I mean, I said I am short of words. I, I appreciate all that she has done. That's part that she called the NGO faith-based organization. And um, irrespective of the faith that she belongs to, but she has combined honor, if I can put it this way. And she was able to make it. And the girls are so proud of her. And take, for example, the two twins. I guess they are not in the same religion. If we can use that in our domestic conflicts, we can be able to make something out of that. Because it's have served many lessons. There is peace in it. There is understanding in it. There is uh, brotherhood in it. And all, name it. So that is it. Like, uh, I won't talk more on former because I'm, I'm for the non-former yes. who has been cheated. Yes. You see, these skills that uh, they are being given now, you know, we go a long way to make these girls to be empowered. They will be self-reliant. They can stand on their own, not relying on anybody depending on husband to buy pants, to buy uh, cosmetics or the rest of them. They can stand on their own to do things. And so in the non-formal education sectors, once you, we see that you can speak English, once we see that you can use that English to be able to help yourself in the bank, to transact your business, we are okay. We will now encourage you to use the same knowledge in your business so that you can, you know, you, you'll be more exposed as to how you can do your business better and how you can make it faster. Because an educated businesswoman, we, we thrive better than the non-educated one because of the exposure that you have been subjected to, which is a good thing. And you can take care of your children. We were talking about health. In the area of health, when you are educated, you are doing all these businesses, uh, skill, uh, entrepreneurship, and the rest of them, you'll be able to take care of your health, your home, your children, you know how to bath. Because once upon the time, we had a program in Paduma, very close to AIT, your office. Okay, we had a program there and we discovered, when we started the program, we saw that women and girls, the children were not bathing. They now told us that they wouldn't want the skin. 
their skin to be touched because that was how God gave it to them and that if they use soap to bath, it may bleach them. So for that reason, they refused. That was how we started the program. A nine-month program there with them from the National Commission for Mass Literacy and by the grace of God, with the aid of uh, USAID that time, we were able to transform women. They became, you know, great business women. Come and see them in the bank. They will, even, they will laugh and come to our executive secretary. They were so happy. They could now sign, no longer Tom Prince, in the bank. They were able to do many things because of education. The little education they could add to their businesses made them thrive and they were empowered. Today we were celebrating the International Women's Day 2020 and we're particularly celebrating the achievements that we've had in girls' education in marginalized communities in the FCT area. So we understood that if the girls needed to remain in school, especially till they complete their education, one main issue is poverty for girls in underserved communities. Some want to go to school, some parents actually want their children to go to school, but they cannot afford it. So for the sustainability of their education, even if we assist them you know, to go back to school, we understood that it was important to empower them with skills so that they could sustain themselves through whatever funds they make from that and remain in school. Because they are vulnerable, sometimes when they are in search of funds to go to school, they get into the hands of wrong people who abuse them and take advantage of them. So when they are empowered with skills, and they have what to do, some form of enterprise, they are able to make money and they keep themselves in, sales in school. Some of them have even gone to the extent of in their communities because we um, set them up in business as communities. Girls are girls in the community. Some of them are going to be as far as saving up the money to help different members of the club. Some needs, one needs exam fees, one needs money to go back to school. You know, they are able to support themselves. I've started with about 20 girls, you know, but um, from one community. But now we have over 400 direct beneficiaries in the FCT. Why I say direct beneficiaries is because the girls also step down the training to other girls in their community. So because of that, you know, we have a larger number of direct beneficiaries. Apart from, of course, the over 1,800 girls that we work with on NJ2. But these are direct beneficiaries of Tabitha Kumi Foundation itself. If, if you have them, um, if you must make a change, we must start on our own. Yes, we, we had a commitment because we saw that there was a gap that needed to be addressed. So we started working with them on our own, but along the way, we got support, you know, from Australian aid, later from Mexico, which is a different um, UK aid and GEC funded um, project also. Too. Well, we're looking for funders, looking for those who will be ready to support the work, seeing what we are doing so that we can scale it up to more communities and affect more lives.